Cholesterol, one of the most controversial topics in medicine. So controversial. And personal for me, because I was diagnosed with high cholesterol Very a few personal. years ago. Controversial and personal. There you go. Welcome to Talking With Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Reading. I'm um, laryngitis. I'm not sick. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. And did you go out partying last night and not invite me? Because no. you sound like you were on a bender. I was on call. I was actually in the operating room. Okay. So, okay. you're going to be able to talk for this? I'm going to have to talk low and slow, which is very unnatural for me, but it's probably good Perfect. therapy. Perfect. My family will be happy. Your dream come true. Okay, so cholesterol is a very naturally occurring substance. It's in our bodies. Yeah. All of our cells make it. It's a critical part of cell membranes and hormones. So cholesterol in and of itself is not the problem. Yeah, I mean, our body needs it. And like you said, it's part of the cell membrane, which yep. is the membrane around our cells, which is a really smart part of the cell. It determines what comes into the cell, what goes out of the yeah. cell, kind of differentiates us from a plant. Right. It has cell walls. Yes. Our cells are more flippy floppy, yep. thanks to cholesterol. Yep. Uh, hormones, right, testosterone, yeah. a lot of different hormones uh, rely on cholesterol or built on cholesterol. Right. And digestion. Right. Geez, we need cholesterol to digest we do. food, yeah. right? Without cholesterol, our liver wouldn't be able to make the bile that we need to, to digest food. So it's super important in our bodies. And when we're talking about cholesterol, when people talk about high cholesterol, we're actually not talking specifically about cholesterol. We're talking about the protein or the lipoprotein that carries cholesterol because it's fatty. It can't kind of be floating around on its own in our blood. It needs right. a carrier to get in and out of different cells. So yeah. usually we're talking about low density lipoprotein or LDL. Right, as opposed to HDL. And medicine over the years has kind of oversimplified it. So there's good cholesterol and there's bad right. cholesterol. The good cholesterol is your HDL, yeah. the bad cholesterol is your LDL. And I think this is because historically, it, it, everyone likes like a simple villain, right. like a single cause. Right. Hey, cholesterol is a problem with heart disease and stroke and death. Let's just get rid of the cholesterol. Problem solved. Look at us, doctors. You're so smart. Right, right. That's kind of where you know how this has evolved over the years. Right. What okay. I would say out of the gate, though, is that decades of well done, well controlled studies show that having elevated cholesterol is 100% associated with increasing your risk of heart attack and stroke. There is some controversy about the benefits of lowering your cholesterol and altering your death rate or your mortality. Mm -hmm. But I think the part that cholesterol is in the plaques that are in our vessels Fine. is not negotiable. Fine. What Would you agree with that? I'd agree with that. But what is negotiable is what level is high cholesterol, considered high cholesterol. For sure. For one. And um, who can tolerate having a high cholesterol where it doesn't affect their outcomes. Right. Okay, and you, I've said this before, you have people who have high cholesterol and never had a heart attack, right. people who have normal cholesterol and have had a heart attack. And I think that is where a lot of the controversy has come and maybe people go, well, well this makes no sense. Right. Like my friend was totally healthy, didn't have high cholesterol, he had a heart attack, and then my other person eats, yeah. eats horribly, has really high cholesterol, yeah. hasn't had a heart attack. It doesn't seem, it's just like there are people that smoke for 40 years and don't get lung cancer. So this is why it's controversial, yeah. right? right? It's one piece of information, it's one measure, Right. But I think it needs to be taken in context of other risk factors. Sure. Smoking, diabetes, family history, hypertension. Right. Those kind of risk factors you have to take. And we've even seen studies. We reviewed studies yeah. a few weeks ago yes. when we looked at all the risk factors yeah. for coronary artery disease and cardiovascular events. Yes. And sure, smoking, obesity, um, diabetes, those yep. kind of th hypertension, they really right. did influence it. And the cholesterol risk factor actually yeah. didn't affect these in outcomes. Some studies, yes. In fact, look like it had the opposite effect. Right. And in addition to that, we've learned how, how bad chronic inflammation is. And really it's all about if persistent inflammation in our body and our blood vessels can we all have plaques in our vessels. Those plaques can become unstable when they break. It's actually the clot that forms in response to that plaque, right. typically that leads to a heart attack or stroke. So it's modifying so many factors like your blood pressure uh, and your diet, not just lowering your cholesterol is not the only way to do it. But this is this is the thing about controversial topics, particularly with social media yeah. and with health influencers, is that A, something controversial gets a lot of clicks and views. Yeah. That's the first thing. Right. But you have to be a little bit careful with what's where's the motivation. So just quickly, let's talk about that. So one thing I would say is that some people vilify the cholesterol hypothesis because of the diets that they promote, whether that's low carb, keto, carnivore, whatever, because sometimes those diets elevate your LDL and there's, it's a way to justify their diet. That's the first thing. Okay. Okay. On that diet yes. thing, 
If you have high cholesterol and you're trying to lower your cholesterol, it turns out that how much cholesterol, how much cholesterol in the food you eat has a very little totally, effect totally on agree. your cholesterol level. So don't make the mistake of saying, oh, well, then it doesn't matter what I eat if I have high cholesterol because if I eat cholesterol, it doesn't affect my cholesterol. Or even the other mistake saying, this food is kind of crappy but has no cholesterol, yeah. then who cares? Here, let's look at that right now. If okay. we look at- Two labels. Yeah, let's look at the label of a Twix bar. <laughs> I love the Twix bar. Poor Twix. Have you had a Twix recently? No, not recently, but I do enjoy a Twix every now and then. Because you can eat one, I you can wait eat. a bit, and then eat the other one. I cannot eat one. I or eat, eat two. Okay, if I, size. I have high cholesterol, so I remember years ago when I was trying to cut back my cholesterol, I was like, oh look, a Twix bar only has seven milligrams of cholesterol. And we'll put this on the screen. Yeah. And that's like 2% of my daily intake, so I can eat like 50 Twix bars, and I'm good. It's a lot of Twix. However, this saturated fat comes in at 95% yeah. of wow. the daily. How many, how many tricks is that for you? Today? And you! How many Twix does that make for you today? Like eight Twix? No. Hey, this cork bar is good. It's a Twix! They're all Twix! It was a setup! A setup, I tell you! And you brought it! So that I can't eat a Twix and that's it. I can't eat anything else for the day. But well, why? Why do you care about saturated fat? Okay, so that's the deal. And let's quick, before we cover yeah. that, let's look at the chip. Oh, okay, sorry. A bag of chips, okay? Yeah. This I'm one's really good because you look at the, ba the back of the bag of chips, uh, and I'll show you this one. We'll put this on the screen. Well, how much cholesterol is in that bag of chips? Zero cholesterol. Zero yeah. cholesterol. So I'm like, yes, I can eat as many chips as I want. Thank you. But if you look at the lipid profile and the saturated fats, yeah. you're at 24% of your yeah. daily intake. That's right, Paul. Okay, so the deal is the saturated fats are what encourage, I'm oversimplifying this so I can understand it, yeah. is what triggers your liver to make the cholesterol. Sure, and trans fats are even worse. So trans trans number one, saturated number two, for sure. Right? And then, and then they trick your liver into not reabsor yeah. into reabsorbing the cholesterol and recycling because your yeah. liver really does reduce, reuse, recycle your cholesterol. Yeah. And so, the trans fats, the saturated fats, those are the culprits in your food that are going to make your cholesterol go up much more so than cholesterol. Yeah, cholesterol is like number three, and then uh, refined carbs and sugars actually on the list don't freak mm -hmm. out all the people. Like, what about sugar? Process. Sugar's Processed, processed foods, foods too. Yeah. So don't be tricked if you look at a label. I don't even know why they put the cholesterol on the label. Because really. they want you to think that it yeah. has no cholesterol. There it's go. good for you. It's very intentional. Okay, so don't think, oh, this bag of chips has zero cholesterol. I'm surprised it's not cholesterol-free chips. I'm sorry, it's not the they, name. They probably, I think they did have labels I'm like sure, that years ago. Of course ago. they did. Well, why? Because you, you bought into it. You're like, I did. I did. Twix. And salty. Yeah. And so that basically, don't be tricked by that. Don't think, oh, I have high cholesterol. This food has zero cholesterol, or this junk food has zero cholesterol, so I can eat it. Right. That's wrong. Okay. We're going to circle back. Mm -hmm. Health influencers, why do they vilify cholesterol, even though it may not be totally true? So first is the diet side to support. Mm -hmm. Number two is the lack of trust or the growing mistrust of mainstream medicine. Yeah. So it's an easy narrative saying, look, these doctors are telling you your cholesterol is a problem. Don't listen to them. They're stupid. Don't go to your doctor. Yeah. Just... Is that what we're saying? No. No. We're not saying no. That. no. No. And then number three is beware of anyone that has another specific agenda to either sell you a book, some supplements, coaching program, is that, trying to make money out of it. Is that what we're doing? No. No. No, we're not doing no. any of that stuff. No. Oh, so okay. that's why. We should. Okay. So uh, is there any evidence, though, Paul, that shows that they've done any studies where low cholesterol? kills people faster and high cholesterol maybe is protective. Is there, is there such a study? Um, well, in, in, I don't know in terms of study, that yeah. I, don't know, I don't know what you're getting at. Okay. But I know that if you have, for example, if you take someone who has liver failure, yeah. one of the prognostic indicators that they're not gonna do well is when their cholesterol goes down. Right, so you're kind of getting to it. There are a couple of studies, particularly one in 2022, that showed people that had lower cholesterol actually uh, higher mortality and so then right. that was interpreted by people who have an agenda or maybe are misinformed that hey low cholesterol actually kills you faster and this i've seen this on social media lots of times right? hey low cholesterol kills you. so that's actually not true so in this group of people it was a sign of generalized decline yes. or declining health or, or being unwell so those people died faster and people that had slightly higher cholesterol 
maybe it was protective in an odd way, but yeah. not a reason to go and try to raise your cholesterol so that you can live longer. Yeah, it's kind of like saying losing weight is going to kill you. Right, well, because, to a point. Well, because we see, like, and, and the same thing with yes. weight loss. Like cholesterol, there's an ideal level. Same thing with body fat, right? The J curves. Right, because if you see, like every time I see someone in the office and they're like, oh, and I lost 50 pounds, my first question is, D were you trying or how did you do that? Right. And the reason I ask this question right off the bat yeah. is because Unexplained weight loss or unintentional unintentional yeah. weight loss is an indication of chronic illness. Something bad might be Sometimes going on. Sometimes cancer, unfortunately, even cancer. Right? Yeah. That's one of the things. One of the signs of cancer yeah. is unexplained, unintentional weight loss when you're not trying to lose weight. So same thing with cholesterol. That might have been what biased that study. Yeah. Is it is a prognostic indicator of bad health. And the authors certainly acknowledge this in the article that people that misrepresent the study, they never say, oh yeah, the authors actually said, hey, there's a bunch of sick people and they had low cholesterol, so the data is skewed, but those yeah. people don't mention that. So yeah. really important. So it's just a little more nuanced in cholesterol, but it's really? like many other things in medicine, right? There's an ideal thing. Same with your blood pressure. Okay. Oh look, this person's doing awesome. Their blood pressure's 80. Well, yeah. they just got shot and they're bleeding out, right. so that's why they're hypotensive. Right. Okay. Okay. So for all the people who are trying to get through the weeds of cholesterol, what's our, like, what's our take home message? I don't have one. I mean, I okay. don't know. I struggle with this every you day. You don't have a take home message? I take a statin yes. and every night when I take it and my family doctor is trying to increase it to get my numbers better. Yeah. I think about this every time. Is this the right thing to do? Should right. I be doing this? Okay. So I'd say generally it's very, very nuanced. That's the first okay. thing. For the average person yes. who's healthy and doesn't have any other risk factors. Right. I can't say what the answer is. Well, no, and I, I, I think research would maybe say if you're young, active, have no family history, have no other metabolic risk factors, having borderline elevated cholesterol is probably not a huge issue. You maybe don't have to take medication. That's yeah. a discussion for you and your doctor, but I think it's not the panic button. That's on one extreme. That's the first one. On Second one is if you do have high cholesterol, you have diabetes, high blood pressure, family history, you don't exercise and you smoke, you are someone that probably would see the benefits of considering medication for this yeah. if you've unsuccessfully lowered it else, elsewhere. Or if you're in a group that's had a heart attack in the past, has had some sort of revascularization, whether it's a stent or bypass, or right. you've had like an aortic aneurysm and you've got a stent, right. or someone like that. Great evidence to show. Definitely that you need to be on medication to lower your, not definitely, but most likely you need to be on medication to lower yes. your cholesterol. Those groups, it's pretty well defined. Agreed. But it's everything in between. And I think the other take home message is cholesterol is, is a part of the problem. That's not negotiable and that's not going away. There are a whole bunch of other parts of the problem that yeah. now we recognize and that's why that simple model from before is flawed and that's why people kind of attack it. But don't think that cholesterol is not a problem because it's a problem. And you don't need to eat any of it. It actually doesn't serve a purpose. No, but eating cholesterol isn't going to put you over the edge. Yes. It's the other things in the food that will raise your cholesterol Agreed. level. And someone's going to say big pharma, and that is true, right? Whenever you have an industry that is making money off of a certain intervention, yes. which is just about every medical intervention, yeah. then it introduces bias in the studies. Sure. And I agree with you, and big pharma plays a big role sure. in the messaging that's coming out about cholesterol, yeah. for sure. Uh, so it is complicated. It's really complicated. We've ex we've explained a few extremes where, where okay, yeah, you don't have to worry about your cholesterol, yeah. and yeah, you do have to worry about your cholesterol, and there's a whole gray area in between. But hopefully, in the future, we'll keep our eyes on the, I keep my eye on these studies all the time, yeah. and we'll bring them to you when we see a study that might shed some light on this. But right now, it is controversial. There you go. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. Leave a comment about your thoughts on cholesterol, statins, whatever you like, leave comments. Yeah, talking with docs, just talk about it. Talk about it. Remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.